Well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio presented by Celebs.com up here at TIFF. Kate Shortland, Saskia Rosendahl. Firstly, congratulations on the film. Um, been a while between projects for you. Um, what is that? Is that just a, a virtue of time or is that more an indication of uh, the state of film and financing and getting it all together? No, I was attached to a few projects, but they I didn't have as much passion for them as this one. And I actually found doing the media after Somersault quite difficult. Yeah. And I thought I just should have a break. So we went to Africa and I worked outside Soweto. Um, and then we adopted our kids. Oh, cool. So I've got a son and a daughter, so I've been quite busy. Yeah. <laughs> so what was it about, the, what, so if you were looking for a passion, did the passion for this project come from Rachel's book, or did it come from wanting to tell a story set in this kind of period? It came from the book, and the way the book is structured is the characters are human beings first, and then the politics and the history creeps up on you. So you feel really close to the characters and, on, and then all these terrible things start happening. So it's sort of, it's, it's the opposite way usually to period dramas about war being told. Usually it's the war, then the characters. This was the opposite. Right, and for you Saskia, I mean it's almost like that this film almost unfolds in real time in a sense. It's like we're spending a few days in this very heightened situation. When was the first time you met Kate and when was the first, did you read the script before you sat down with her or or what did you know about the project when you guys met? Um, I came in very late in this project and I read the script um, the night before I met Kate <laughs> and yeah then um, it was, I felt um, like the character itself, I didn't really think about um, the whole difficulties of the period first, but only um, thought about the interesting development of the character. It's almost like she just has to deal with things on a moment by moment basis, right? And so when you met, what, what was it about each other that you thought you wanted to work together? She made me cry in the casting, um, because Saskia's a dancer, so she, um, at the end of the day, she grabbed Kai Molina, who plays Thomas, she grabbed hold of his shirt and she let go of her feet and then he backed away from her and she just let her body go and it was such a big movement and it's such a sort of visceral um, feeling that everybody in the room burst into tears. Do you speak German? No. So wanting to make this film, in, was there ever a time when you thought, yeah, I want to do this film but I want to, I'll want i probably make it in English? No, four years ago I said to the producers, if we didn't make the film in German, then I couldn't direct it. Because I just knew, I mean, Saskia speaks good English, but the other kids don't speak any English, really, the little ones. And it would have, we would have had to cast for the English rather than casting for the, the good actors. Right. It wouldn't have worked at all, yeah. So was that an exciting or a daunting prospect, being able to not communicate directly with your stuff? I don't know what what was it like. It was we we I don't really remember it. Maybe it's like childbirth. I don't really remember it being terrible. No, I mean for me in the beginning when I met her first time, it was quite difficult to um, talk about all the emotional things because my school English was not that good. <laughs> but um, we spent so much time to, time together, and that was it wasn't really a problem, mm. was it? And for you as well, Saskia, it was, it's really your first you know, feature lead performance, was that, um, did you feel like it, it, it was taking you to a place where you had to be a lot braver than you are normally, and did you find that frightening at all? Um, actually, it wasn't frightening because I was, um, the team was so lovely, it was so um, caring about me and me personally as well, and I never felt uncomfortable, and um, of course it was, uh, different experience from everything I, I experienced before. It was different from every performance um, I had on stage before um, and it was challenging but not, not scary. Yeah. Had you seen Somersault? Yes. Before or after you met? 
Um, I met her and then I watched the film and then we shot Laura. <laughs> Is it is it weird, Kate, seeing the trans like the transformation of the people that were in that film? I mean, Abby's here this year. Um, Abby Cornish is up here. Um, Sam Worthington obviously has become a big star. Is there is the success of that film and those actors? Is that is that something that weighs on you, or is it something that's just you know it's out there in the ether? Yeah, it's out there in the ether. Like I'm working with Sam at the moment. Um, I'm I'm writing a series that he's producing. So we often sit in the writing room together with the other writers and he's just the same. He's just as goofy and ridiculous and funny as he always was. Yeah, so um, it's sort of like it, it hasn't changed anything. Do you think that's a factor of being Australian and working in Australia as well? That they get caught up in the, in the madness sometimes? Yeah, I think, I think good actors know what it is to um, get caught up in that yeah. and they they just want to make good work and um, I think he's one of those actors he's really serious about his work but he really enjoys his life the co-production thing that came up oh, on this yeah. film I mean there's Germany Scotland Australia yeah. sorry UK Film Council sticker at the end as well Are you, do you get involved in any of that or you leave it to the producers I did get involved in this because um, during the when we were trying to finance the film, the global financial crash happened and the UK Film Council folded. So then we had to find more money. And then I was traveling with Carsten Stotter in Germany, having meetings. Um, and to his credit, he got the money, but it was really, it was really difficult. Is it, did, um, did Scotland bringing financing to this project, did that did that change anything? Is there anything Scottish about this movie that we're not we, that we just didn't Besides see? Besides the kilts, <laughs> yeah, all the kilts. Paul Welsh was the um, he was the first producer, and he's so great on script. And he was the one that forced me to do. There's three novellas, and he was the one that forced us to do the most difficult one, which is Laura. And um, he's been there ever since. He's here now. So he, I think it's his Scottish good humour and um, stoicism that's sort of got us through, actually. There's there's obviously like some references even in the credits to um, the Crowitz family photos as well. And I know both you and Tony were living in Europe. He was making his film, you were making yours. Did you embark on those projects separately at the same time? Were you both kind of going in and out of like a home base? And how much do you guys actually communicate to each other about the stuff you're working on? Liz Watts was producing both projects with other producers. We were based in Berlin and then we started travelling through Germany for the shooting of the film. So Tony came for a lot of that and then he was wrecking to Greece and Hungary and going back and forward for Dead Europe. And then I got back to Australia and four days later he left to shoot Dead Europe and we didn't have a house and I had the two kids. So. It was um, really chaotic, but it was also part of the experience. The whole experience was so chaotic because we we're in forests, and it wasn't it wasn't easy. Making a film that's set in this period is obviously going to put you in the pathway of commenting on the politics of the situation. Mm -hmm. Do you think about that as well before you embark on a project, knowing that you're going to have to spend time with it afterwards, commenting on all sorts of things that perhaps you know, and not central to the story for you, or...? Well, the victims of the Holocaust were the central... They were what we thought of for the whole time, because the father in the story is um, one of the heads of the Einsatzgruppen, which is the mobile death squads in Belarus. So all the houses we were shooting in were Jewish houses that had been taken off the families in the 30s. So it was everywhere we shot. One of the places we shot was a slave labour um, armaments factory. So that was central to everything we were doing, even though we were making a film about kids whose parents were perpetrators. My husband's family are German Jews. It was all, um, it all had to be tied together and you, you have to totally, always be going towards the truth, trying to find the truth. Yeah. Saskia, for you, living in Germany, working in Germany, um, obviously there's a lot of material that's based around the Holocaust and these events. 
is there any reluctance on the part of you as a German actor or to get involved in projects like this because you've seen or maybe heard so much of it or is it just part and parcel of, of what what has happened and therefore there are always going to be stories that are you know that involve this this subject matter for for German actors I think there should always be stories about it because there's so many other things to be told and um, I was really lucky that um, I was involved in a project that um, tells this um, tells something about this period in a totally different um, point from a po um, point of view that um, is not that usual and um, therefore it was not like oh again this um, theme and this topic to talk about um, we learn a lot about it in school so it's always um, present so we always um, think about it again and again and but this was um, totally different mm. very cool well thanks so much for spending a few minutes chatting to us this morning appreciate it congratulations <laughs>